I am starting recording. Anyone who uses any uh, vulgar language or anything like that is going to get booted. I do understand everybody here is grown, but uh, different people have different mindsets. Um, and this is a business call. Um, so to get started, um, just know if you want to unmute yourself, uh, go ahead and unmute yourself. Um, I will say that if I limit the conversation, I will give you a 30 second heads up that, you know, uh, what you need to say needs to kind of wrap up. That way we can get through this two hour session. Um, but this is a chance for other people to talk. Like I said, there is no right or wrong way to do this. Um, everybody's going to be a little bit different. Um, so to start off, my name is Nicholas Jackson. I am uh, the owner of Take Mo Selfies. I originally started this venture trying to open up a selfie studio along the way. I um, was not able to get the venue that I wanted. So I started working with photo booths and um, mobile booths uh, that got me into the 360 business. Uh, this month, just to let you know, um, I think I've made about $5,000 profit off of doing 360 boots. Um, it can be profitable depending on how you're going to do it. Um, I have had a couple of questions that I am going to go through. Um, the first thing that I am going to talk about is starting your business. Um, most people ask, do I need an LLC? Do I need an EIN? Do I need insurance? Uh, to be very, very honest with you, that is going to depend on the market that you are marketing to. Um, if you're doing kids parties, um, smaller venues, um, not really trying to get into weddings, corporate events, uh, most of the time you can get away with just owning a 360 booth, showing up to an event, using something like either Cash App or Square to take payment. And that's that, claiming whatever income it is on your personal uh, taxes. Please make sure you pay taxes. It is still income. Um, by the way, I do want to say I am not a lawyer. I am not an accountant. Um, that means please do not take my advice as legal advice. Please do not take my advice as accounting advice. Um, do your research. A lot of this is research that we've all kind of done and we're just kind of bringing it together. Um, but before we really talk about getting into your LLC, I always say choose your market. Um, for instance, as we talked about kids parties, corporate events, weddings, um, that market in itself is going to change what you need. Um, I personally do a lot of corporate events and I occasionally throw in a kid's party. Um, I have a sweet 16 tomorrow, but that's for someone that I work with who knows me. Um, but a lot of my events are weddings, corporate events, and um, I even have uh, the ability to do the governor's gala, which is in another year and a half. Um, and that was just from the type of events and the type of uh, product that I wanted to put out. Um, so I did start with getting my LLC. As you can see, I have my Take Mo Selfie shirt on. Um, I do have an EIN number. For those of you who are confused on how to get an EIN, um, you can create an EIN every single day under your social security number through the IRS website. Um, I do have a lot of uh, this information put into a sheet that I will send out later. Um, and as we kind of answer questions, I will be able to send you all the links to some of these sites. Um, so just to show you what that site looks like, let me share my screen. And so when you're looking at the IRS website, it is going to be the same. This is the one website that is gonna be the same no matter what state you're in. Uh, so applying for an EIN, um, and the reason I went through this first before going to what type of company are you going to do is because as you can see, if you have a sole proprietorship, a partnership, a LLC, a corporation, it's going to change um, which, which one you need to click for your EIN. Uh, speaking of that, sole proprietorship, hey, I own it. I don't want anybody else working for me. I'm going to do this on my own. That's the route to go. Um, and nine times out of 10, 
you haven't really had to pay anything for incorporation. Um, LLC, for me, I planned on people working for me. I planned on having a separate building and growing this building to other things. Um, so I went with an LLC um, and I actually started with an LLP um, because I did have a business partner going in um, that did fall through. So then I switched myself to an LLC. LLC filings. Um, you're going to file with the Secretary of State of your state. So for instance, when you're searching for that, I do understand there are people in the chat that will do this for you. And by all means, if you don't wanna do that work, pay somebody. Um, if you do uh, help people with filing for LLCs, please put your name inside of the, uh, the chat, place your uh, email address. But that is a very, um, it's very simple to be able to do. So for instance, I'm in Missouri. So I can just type in Missouri Secretary of State Business, and I usually put in business filings. As you can see, it'll take me to the Secretary of State Business Services, and then I can actually either file for a fictitious name, register an LLC, and for me, I wanted to register an LLC. Uh, from here, this is where you're going to, sorry, trying to let a couple of people in. Uh, create your portal name and you can actually um, do all the paperwork through this portal. It costs $50 in Missouri, but it may be a different fee depending on where you are. This is one of those things that I can't really tell you specifically what to do just because 50 different states plus um, some people are doing this in Australia and other places. It's really going to depend on where you are. Um, I do always tell people if you're going to create a business name, take a quick session to do a search. Uh, so for my company, I'm Take Mo Selfies. As you can see, um, I am an LLC registered agent, is me created back in June. Um, and it gives me my charter number. Make sure you check your name. Um, I know with 360s, uh, a lot of people go simple, some people go more um, off the wall. Just make sure that when you're doing um, when you're doing an LLC, when you're doing your business, you search that name first. Uh, do your due diligence. Um, these are the things that you really need to do before you even think about uh, starting the business. Uh, the next thing you really need to think about is what's your budget? Um, for me, uh, my budget was $5,000. Uh, with that $5,000, I purchased everything that I needed um, not only for the 360 business, but I also do other photo booths um, as well. Um, I created a, a calculator that kind of ran through my budget. And this is not a tutorial. This is just a quick run through um, of really what that looks like when I talk about starting your budget and what you need. So for me, I started off with a little before you begin, something that I had to ask myself, how much do I like talking to people? Cause this is a talk to people type of um, environment. What am I looking to get out of my business? How many hours do you have? Um, to be very, very honest with you, this can get time consuming. The longer you go, the more clients you get. Um, ignore the $30,000. That was just an example that I put in for somebody else. Uh, but I want people to understand you're talking about booking events, marketing, putting yourself out there on Facebook, setting up for events. Even if you're not creating overlays, you're going to find overlays, you're going to find music, and we'll cover some of that stuff uh, real quick. Uh, but you're gonna be doing a lot more than just taking the booth, dropping it off. Um, if you have a six hour event and you don't have any employees, realize you're gonna have to sit there for six hours and spin the booth. Um, so even when I talked about, you know, what type of market, uh, what type of personality do I want my business to present? I want a fun environment while enjoyable for younger audiences, weddings, I can still work for corporate events. A lot of people ask me why I went with plain black and white, uh, black and white does good with kids cause I can put any color with it, but it does great with corporate events. 
Um, I really didn't answer some of these other questions, but these are things that as I do one-on-one -on -one consultations, I wanted to talk to people. Uh, before I even bought my booth, um, I found out what day my booth would be delivered. And I started planning events and trying to get people to um, rent myself. Um, raise your hand if you um, if you've done an event, but before you even bought your booth, you had an event um, scheduled before your booth even showed up. And you can do so in the chat to raise your hand. But for me, that meant that I was already making money the day it came. And I literally had an event two days later. Um, make sure that if at all possible, if you don't feel comfortable with, um, you know, dealing with a booth, and you want to have a little more time, you can still book events in advance. Just make sure you book one or two weeks after your booth gets here. Um, that was a great way that I started making money. It took two events for me to make my money back uh, for everything that I spent. Um, and so I'm going to show you that some of the things that I spend, I don't have rent because my booth is here at my house. Um, don't pay for lights. Uh, my phone number is $6 a month just because I added it on to my other uh, Wi-Fi hotspots. If you're not sure if you're going to have uh, hotspots at a lot of events, I would tell you it is better to buy a Wi-Fi hotspot sometimes than to actually use the hotspot on your phone. Uh, realize that phone gets bogged down because it's sending text messages, updating itself. A Wi-Fi wi hotspot is dedicated to just sending internet. Um, you can get them at T-Mobile, any at Verizon, um, AT&T, any of those. Uh, auto insurance. For those of you who may have another vehicle, you may have to pay for auto insurance. Um, just talking to you about business insurance, this kind of relates to what's my audience. Um, I just had a corporate event that asked me if I had at least $500,000 um, in liability insurance per injury um, and if I could show a certificate for it. Um, and so for that, I, uh, I luckily use Liberty Mutual. And yes, I will share the uh, Excel sheet. Um, and so I actually have insurance that covers all of my equipment up to a million dollars per injury. Um, and if anything happens at any of these events, I get all my stuff replaced. Um, I will also show you what I kind of charge per event because I really don't have an hourly rate. Uh, domain and websites, just letting you know, it does make you look more professional sometimes. Uh, the name of the game is, is always professionality. How, how do you come off to a client is going to really give you, um, give what your business is going to be like. Um, so for me, I, I really wanted to make uh, profits. Um, if it is a non-for-profit, what I want to make per hour is going to be about 125 bucks. Um, my birthday package is actually higher. I dropped it for one of my friends. Um, so it's at $100, but it's usually 135-ish, um, 140-ish. Um, I look at birthday parties and I always say that I don't want to hit I'm a little different. I don't want to hit somebody over the head um, as a birthday party as I would a government contract or a um, or a corporate event. Uh, weddings, I usually do about 150, which it just went up to 200. Um, so most of my prices have went up about $50 within the last month. Um, Corporate events, corporate events are about $225, and this is profit. And you'll see why I say profit uh, in a second. And then events with over 300 guests is about 325 right now. Uh, what else I did is these are the things that I purchased. So when you talk about what is required or optional, this is the perfect list for you. Um, my 360 boot cost me about two, uh, $2,200. I got it mines off of Alibaba. Um, you can get 360 boots on Alibaba, Amazon, uh, Revel Spin, Orca View, um, and I'll share a list of those as well once this ends, and I'll send it to everyone. But um, I chose Alibaba. It is a Chinese um, Chinese shipping, almost like Amazon. 
Mine's has worked great. Uh, depending on who you get yours from, it's going to depend on how well yours does. Um, I tell people, I've heard people who have gotten theirs from Revo Spin, spent $5,000, and it broke a month and a half later. I've heard people get one from Revel Spin who's had it for a year and a half and nothing has happened. Um, it's really going to not only depend on where you got it from, but your maintenance. And we'll talk about maintenance in a second. Recording device. Realize for, uh, for me, I started out with an iPhone just because I have, um, I had an extra iPhone. I actually use my iPhone 11 and I use my 13 as a backup. Um, you can use GoPros, DSLRs, Android phones, and iOS phones. Realize iOS is probably going to be the more fluid, and you'll be able to use more applications. Most of the applications for 360s are really geared towards iPhone users and iPad users. Um, that does not mean that you cannot um, you will not be able to find them because I have a couple of applications that work for both. Um, I currently use a mix of LumaBoot, TouchPix, RevoSpin, and Salsa. And I will tell you why I actually use all four. Um, the next thing is the sharing station. Not everybody needs a sharing station, but I will say I use my iPad. Um, it works great with TouchPix, LumaBoot, RevoSpin, um it is a way to get people in and out um when people ask me what is the best ipad what is the best uh, yes i use all three of those all four of those for 360. uh when people ask me what is the best ipad what generation you need it's going to depend on your software and we'll go through the uh differences in all the softwares um once we get past how much what you need and uh, how much you can charge um, if you notice, I have one that says software 999. I originally started out by purchasing touch picks for the full year. Um, it was 999, it dropped to 799 at one point, but you're going to need a photo booth software. Some of them you can do monthly subscriptions and starting out, if you don't have a big budget, those monthly subscriptions come in handy. Uh, right now, Revo Spring has given away uh, their application for free. So there is no charge to it right now. And Revel, uh, Revel Spin would be um, for Android and for iOS. Um, my sharing station is uh, basically once you take a video, and I can actually show you on the phone. So the first one we're going to look at is going to be what happens if you were using touch picks? So inside of touch picks, you would create your uh, create your event. And I actually have a open event right now. So for those of you who have used touch pick, you know we need to use a QR code to open. And I am going to sharing station. So when you click sharing station, if you're using touch picks, you always need your QR code to open and close events. But what happens, yes, I will have all the apps, all everything written down and sent out. Um, It'll probably take me an hour or two after, just because as I was talking, I realized that I'm not gonna have everything written down. But for your sharing station, it's actually just gonna be the gallery. Right now, I don't have any of them synced. Um, but what happens in the gallery, and the reason I like it uh, not syncing straight off, is all of your videos are uploaded to the cloud. Um, the gallery or your sharing station is going to download those videos so that you're able to share them directly um, with your client without having to use the same device you're recording from. Um, this is great because I can have someone on the booth while someone else is getting their picture shared 
And basically I have this rotating line of somebody waiting in line, someone on the booth, someone getting their pictures and I'm continuously moving people. Uh, the biggest issue I do have with touch picks is um, if the sharing station is not um, connected to very good internet, it does take a while. So as you can see, this video is 39 seconds. It took about, um, about a minute for it to go over. Um, so that does become an issue. Yes, this is being recorded. Uh, but basically, once I'm here, I'm actually able to go in and I can share either through SMS, I can send someone an email, you can let them scan a QR code, you can airdrop, which is great if you have a lot of iDevices. I use WhatsApp because my area has a lot of international people. Uh, those international people don't really use their phones as much because they're trying to communicate with people back home. And then I also give them to the choice of being able to use my personal device, depending on the situation. So that is basically what a sharing station is. Um, it is just a way to share the video that you've just taken with whatever application you're using and sending it to someone. Um, most applications have this, actually almost all of them do. Um, it's just a little different on how you actually uh, go about it. Um, while I'm switching back over, are there any questions? You're more than welcome to unmute yourself. Um, I got about nine minutes scheduled for questions as far as sharing stations, the basic essentials of getting for your 360 boot. Jill, um, first of all, thank you so much for offering this. Very helpful. I'm the one asking if it's going to be recorded. My yes, question is, what Revo Spin is it? I'm using TouchFix right now. Mm -hmm. Revo Spin has it shown to be reliable for events? Um, I just wonder because it's free. So um, it's free now, and I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, Revo Spin was not the most reliable app to start with, and that's part of why it's kind of been free. Um, it was kind of glitchy to start with, um, but it was a great app, especially with their 360 boots and with them being one of the uh, leading sellers of 360 boots, it was a great application. Um, since then, it has become a lot better. Um, I've actually used it at two of my smaller events. Um, and because it is a very, it is a very basic app. So it is going to just give you a um, fast motion, slow motion, and then it's going to do the backwards motion. Um, to kind of answer the question in the chat, uh, the reason I use four different softwares, um, RevoSpin, LumaBooth are very, very basic apps. Um, RevoSpin wasn't free at the time, but um, LumaBooth is only $19.99 a month. Um, compared to touch picks, which is $140 a month. Um, for that price point, if I have an event that is a birthday party that I'm only making $125 uh, dollars in profit, I don't wanna spend $140 if that was quote unquote, my only event of the month. I really have to think that some months I'm not gonna get four events. Um, because I do those smaller events, I needed a more affordable option for a software. Um, but if I wanted to use a lot of effects, uh, TouchPix is one of the most robust applications, which is why it's the most expensive. I use it um, because I can do a bunch of different edits to a video that make it very special for that client. So for my larger clients, they get a more specialized touch. Um, Luma Booth. Luma Booth is one of them that I use because even when I don't have uh, internet, the two apps kind of work together uh, a lot easier. Um, Luma Booth, TouchPick, Revel Spin. Um, and then the last one was Snappic and Salsa. Snappic was, um, it had more features that I really, really liked and they gave me a free trial. Um, so that was the reason that I used it. I really don't remember exactly what the price for that was. Uh, Snappic was $99 a month per device, um, which is also great. Since I also do um, 
non-360 booths. Uh, yes, yes, Luma booth is also for 360s. Uh, since I do standstill boots, I also use different apps because I can do a standstill and a 360 all in the same gallery. And so I'm only sending the client one, um, one single link to all of their videos and pictures instead of using two or three different applications. Um, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Uh, as far as uh, the sharing stations, though, I see some people have like a TV monitor mm -hmm. and the I iPad and the iPhone. Like, yes. What, what's the need for all three? Okay, so um, the only time I've ever needed multiple sharing stations um, was that I had what I called a return station, and then I had a direct uh, direct from booth sharing station. Um, so basically anyone that was getting off the booth that wanted to access their videos and be able to see them, as soon as they stepped off the booth, there was an iPad and it's actually on this stand. And I just placed my iPad inside of it and they're able to go in, view all of their videos and they were able to send their videos to themselves. For anyone who may have left, um, hey, I didn't get my picture or I took like five of them and I was waiting on my video to download, I had a second station on the other side that they could come back to and they really didn't interrupt the flow of my line. Um, now, as far as the TV, the TV is a great sharing station because one, people can download by QR code. Number two, it kind of works as a tracker. People get to see the videos as they're happening or they get to see a carousel of all of the videos that you've taken. And so I used it to bring people to the booth. Um, it works especially well if you're doing something like pay per spin, which just means that instead of a venue paying you, uh, paying you a certain amount to do your 360, you're just bringing people over. And every time they come over, you may say, hey, you get two spins for $10. Um, especially at an event like that, for them to see those type of pictures, they go, oh, I want to do that. Oh, that looks really good. Um, so it's just a bigger um, screen for them to see it. And for a lot of us, it's also an upsell. So whenever I do my uh, TV, I will tell the client, hey, you know, it's going to be an extra $200 if you want me to set up the TV sharing station. Um, so now I've just made $200 and the only thing I've done is set up a TV. And, and also, um, it's a requirement for the sharing station to have the Apple TV also? So if you want the TV, uh, if your TV does not have Apple Share already in it, the um, Apple TV is the easier way to go. Okay. Um, so a lot of smart TVs now, especially if you get something around a 43-inch 4K TV, you're going to get a um, built-in pretty much Apple TV. The other thing that you may want an Apple TV for is Apple TV does not require you to have internet to share sometimes. Depending on your devices, you can actually just share straight to the Apple TV, um, which helps when you're somewhere that's low on internet because some of these smart TVs, you have to have internet to be able to share the screen to the Apple TV, because what it's really doing is being on the same Wi-Fi. Gotcha. Um, let me go to a couple of questions in the chat before I move on. Uh, can you show the app and how it works? I will show a little bit about Luma Booth a little later. I have it in the next session uh, section. Um, are we going to have access to recording? Yes, you will. You will have access to the recording. Um, so I did buy my uh, iPad stand from um, Amazon. Um, and I actually pulled up my cart because I figured somebody would ask about that. Um, the most recent one that's here is the mounted anti-theft. Um, and so let me share my screen. 
Um, so it's the mounted anti-theft kiosk stand. Um, it's $83 on Amazon. Uh, it'll get to you in about two days. Um, it's a really solid one. It works for not only Apple devices, but also uh, Android devices. Um, I also like that this one has a channel down the back that allows me to put um, my cord. Um, and so if I want to charge it, I can actually place a, um, if I don't have a plug, I can actually put one of my power banks at the bottom and just let it charge from the power bank. Um, I always tell people running videos constantly, especially if you do a, you know, four, five, six, seven hour event, that will drain that battery. Um, especially if you're running it the entire time sending stuff. Uh, so I make sure it's always charged. Uh, but this is a really, really great one that's really affordable. Um, I actually started with a, um, a cheaper one. It was like $30. Um, it was good for what I needed, but it also didn't look as professional as I wanted it to, um, but it works. Um, and so it was just a simple stand case. Uh, it's screwed together and it's actually sitting right next to me right now. I still use it as my second sharing station. Um, but this one's also good. It just kind of depends on your budget. Um, what's gonna be the best one. Uh, would you know if I can use my GoPro on LumaBoof? LumaBoof at the moment does not do GoPros, um, but you can add overlays and music. Yes, there are people who don't use uh, software at all. And let me address that. I don't want anybody to take this the wrong way. Some people look at having a manual booth. Uh, sometimes it's a little less professional, but I really like the manual booth because a lot of people have gotten very, very creative with it. Um, I actually saw a young man who had a manual booth. You put your own phone on it. You hit TikTok and he would push it right at the right moment so that it would record your TikTok and go in slow motion and do everything it's supposed to do. Um, and he never used his own devices. Um, he was great for younger audiences, sweet 16s, uh, things like that, just because they enjoyed it. Um, and it was very personalized for them because it was to their app, it was in their aspect ratio and everything was saved to their phone. Um, he also never spent money on uh, a device. Um, but the problem with that is people's phones do weird things. People have jacked up cameras, different phones, applications crash. Um, so after a while, he did switch over to having his own application because it was just harder and it took longer for him to get their phone set up, angled correctly. Um, and I don't know if anybody's done an event, but one of the biggest issues I have is making sure that all of my videos are centered. Uh, when you're switching out phones like that, it's really hard to get your video centered every time, which means that your customers not only getting a different push uh, every single time, but the angle of their video is different every time. Um, in no way am I saying that automatic is better than manual. Um, get what you can afford, but I will say I do like automatics, which I do have one because I do get a very consistent video each time. Um, I have a question. Yes. So with the automatic, have you had any, um, have you had any problems with the automatic? Like <laughs> anybody stepped off has to even, uh, ever <laughs> broken. So, that was kind of one of my fears. I have one and I'm like, oh my God, maybe I shouldn't have got this. Okay, uh, short story, I got about three minutes so I can stay on track because uh, I wanted to give y'all about 40 minutes to just be able to ask away after we got through. But my very first event was um, the Alpha Founders Day party. Um, we're talking college students, 18 to about 23. Uh, some of them have been drinking and I was in a little corner right next to the dance floor. Um, somebody decided to cut through my booth, even though I had stanchions up, and the 360 smacked her in the face and knocked her to the ground. 
um, realized it's going around and it connected straight to the face. That was the scariest moment of my life. Um, but luckily she got up, um, she actually ended up apologizing to me even though I was really apologizing to her. Um, and basically I then got very, very protective of my space uh, because I've had three times that I've had drunk people at a corporate event step off. Um, and I've actually taken the brunt of what they would have got hit with with my arm. I'm very active around my booth. Um, and trust and believe, uh, there, there's a reason why stanches were created, uh, why I try to have an entrance and an exit. Um, there's a lot. And even making sure that... Um, before they even step on, I actually have a sign that says, here are the rules. Please do not step off until this completely stops. Um, and I make that very, very clear um, because when I go back and I have to do an insurance claim, I want to be able to say, hey, before each section, there's a sign here that says, please don't do these things. I verbally told them, please don't do these things. And then they still did it. So then I'm not at fault um, when things happen. Uh, but I will tell you, it is going to be all about your crowd control. Um, I've actually told people who are super, super drunk that, hey, I apologize, but you just won't be able to get on the 360 because I don't, I, you can't even stand right. And standing on a platform with an arm that's going around, I'm just gonna have to say no to you getting on. Um, no one had an issue with it. Um, even the person who actually was running the event, he came over, he said, I thank you. Um, if he sobers up by the end of the night, can he get on? I said, sure. Um, and I didn't have any issues, but just make sure, um, that is one reason why insurance is kind of important, especially if you have an automatic boot. Um, I tell people it's always, I mean, a 360 in general, there are a couple of things that scared me when getting it. Stepping on, stepping off. You never know if someone's going to roll their ankle, um, anything like that, especially if they have heels. Um, and then that booth can actually make people dizzy, just kind of looking at the camera. Uh, if they're following it, it can't make them dizzy. So, um, but moral of the story is it's going to happen. <laughs> Um, it's, it, it's, it's inevitable that you're going to get a drunk person who steps off, um, that you're going to get somebody who thinks that they can cut through depending on where it is. Um, you just have to do whatever possible to say, I put in boundaries in place to make sure this didn't happen. Um, and so, yes, let me get back to talking about, uh, things that are needed. So if you use a sharing station, um, the answer to one of the questions is yes, you're going to need one device to shoot and one device to share. Um, if you're using an iPhone or an iPad, you can use the same device to do both. So basically what will happen is you will let your booth go around. Once it stops, it processes, the video will pop up on your software and you can share directly from that device. So a sharing station is not needed it will just make the workflow a lot easier. Um, the next thing is uh, booth ring light. Um, for me, uh, Walmart has a booth light that is about 25 bucks. Um, 12 inches is really gonna give you the best light. Uh, the thing about a booth ring light is that you are going to need to make sure that depending on your uh, 360 machine, you have the right attachment. Uh, what that looks like for me, if I go to Amazon, I can look at a, a horseshoe mount and a lot of us on the top of our 360 have a ball that looks something similar to this. If you have this, the reason that I use the, um, the mount from Walmart is that um, it screws directly on. I don't need an extra attachment. So 
most of the time you're going to need a ring light that has a female portion that looks like this. Um, once again, I'll send out, I'm actually going to send out a link of everything that I bought. Um, and then that way you can actually see this is the exact, this is the exact um, ring light that I have. These are the wine lights. So the next thing is recommended, wine lights. Um, sometimes your ring light's just not gonna be powerful enough. Uh, the way that my setup is right now is I use the PowerPoint as my notes, so. All right, so the way that my setup is right now is that I have my 360 booth. I have four wine lights that sit around it. I have the stanchions that cover any side. And for this moment, we're gonna use, uh, we're gonna say this is a wall where there's no stanchion. Um, and then I say my prop tables here next to the entrance. I have my iPad sharing station and my business cards where they exit. That is my normal setup with four lights, prop table, sharing station, and stanchions. Um, it gives me an in, out, it lets me control the flow, but I also don't have to worry about the person coming in, bumping into the person going out. Um, it just makes it an easy flow. Plus I usually have two attendants, myself, and I have one other person with me. And the other person is usually in charge of the iPad sharing station. Uh, or if I need a break to go to the bathroom, they'll run the booth, let the sharing station run by itself uh, because the sharing station really is something easy that anybody can do. Um, the wine lights that I did choose, I'm going to pull those up. Um, also got those off of Amazon. I am somebody who does not like uh, batteries. I mean, not batteries. Um, I don't like plugs. Um, so everything that I bought had batteries so that I never had to worry about, um, was I next to a plug? How do I worry about cable management? Um, and that is going to be a big thing for most people. Um, sometimes if you have everything that plugs in, it does not work when you only have two plugs. Um, so the exact set of lights that I bought were the newer two pack of RGB lights. Uh, the reason I really like these lights is they not only turn on to different colors, but they also have different effects. Uh, some people asked me in, a, uh, in the chat, how did I get one of my videos to have a uh, photography flash effect? Uh, basically, I can use this remote control and I can turn it to lightning. And basically it just does random pulses of flashes. It looks like paparazzi. Um, it works great when you're at, um, if you're doing a Hollywood night event, if you're doing uh, anything that just is Hollywood related um, or for just any random event, people like the feel of paparazzi. Um, yes, they are 179 for two which means you're gonna pay about 350. But I tell people, these are amazing. I don't have any issues out of them. I bought these battery packs. Uh, it's a four pack of batteries for uh, 86 bucks. These batteries last on 20% brightness, almost 15 hours. I don't go brighter than 20% um, cause these, these lights are ridiculously bright. Um, I would pull one out and if we got time, I will because everything's packed up for the event tomorrow. Um, that is the only lights that I use. I did buy some can lights, but those are just kind of like to, um, if I have a runway going up to the booth, I do the lights that shine up, uh, but those are for special events. Um, back to our regularly scheduled program. Power. So when we talk about power, um, a lot of people want to know um, what they can use for power banks. Um, I actually use the 20,000 milliamp 
dual power bank from own o-n-n um you can find that in amazon walmart um and one of the reasons i really liked it is twenty thousand uh twenty thousand amps allows me to charge my phone seven times um on a ring light it also shows me a percentage of what this um what the power bank is at they're only 30 bucks um i have three uh, the reason I have three is I have one that's fully charged for the boot. It only runs the ring light. I have a another one for the iPad, and I have another one in case either one of those breaks. Uh, one of the biggest mistakes you can make as a 360 person is you don't have something in case something else breaks. Um, I got six of the horseshoes. I got... Uh, the only thing I don't have a duplicate of is the arm for my machine. Um, and I literally just ordered one because I saw someone else break the very tip of theirs into a ring light. And that was the end of their event. To be very, very honest with you, make sure you have duplicates of everything because you never know. Um, you never know what's going to happen. Um, and like I said, it's really not about a best brand. Um, I will say, if you're looking for a power bank, get one that has a digital display of how much battery is left. I wouldn't get one that just says uh, one bar, two bar, three bars, or four bars. I like one that tells me it's at 88%, it's at 76%, because I can... Um, I can actually go in and make sure that everything is fine. I am going to mute everybody because some people are having issues with hearing. All right. So um, everyone should be able to just hear me. Um, so the power bank, make sure you have a digital display and make sure that it's at least 10 to 20,000 milliamps. Um, and the reason for that is those batteries are gonna give you three or four phone charges. When you're running an LED ring light, that means you're gonna be good for a good eight to 12 hours. I don't have events that last longer than eight to 12 hours. And that's also why I have, um, that's also why I have multiple banks because that way I can have one charging while I'm using the other. Yes, this is recorded and I'm just gonna go through and answer some questions. Um, as far as insurance, I'll show you some places to, um, to look at. Um, you, you're really gonna wanna look at insurance. Uh, Gav tape. If you're somebody who ends up, because if you plug in your booth, you are gonna have a cord for safety. I use gaff tape. Uh, gaff tape is basically the tape that they use for um, theater to put down cords. Um, it's a simple tape. It does not leave a residue on uh, surfaces. So no matter what floor, whether it's carpet, uh, concrete, it sticks to all of it. I, I have about six things of gaff tape. Um, even though I like to be cordless, I will tell you that your booth is going to have um, cords, so um, you're definitely going to need it. Um, I'm sorry that I kind of skipped over this, but yes, I do have a power bank for my 360. Uh, give me one second, I'm going to pull it out. <laughs> um, my 360 power bank is a talent sale power bank that I found on Amazon. Um, I've actually ran a eight hour event and I still had two bars left. So I'm a super organized person. All of my power banks stay in one box. So just so you can see, I'm going to stop sharing for a second. This power bank is the one that I use for my 
uh, ring light. As you can see, it does let me know that there is 46% left. But this is the power bank that I use for the 360. This power bank also comes with a splitter because a lot of us who bought ours from Alibaba or um, anywhere that's really not Revelspin, actually even Revelspin, um, the lights that go around your 360 also need power. So this comes with a great splitter that allows me to put both of those in here. This does only have the one, two, three, and four bars, but it was a $70 battery. Um, and I actually bought two of these. I have yet to use my second battery for any of them. And yes, I will uh, link it. I will actually show it to you now. Oh, that thing's heavy. Great thing about Amazon is anything that you've ever ordered, you can always go back and look at it. Um, doo -doo -doo. Oh, that was 2021. Actually, I can just pull it up because I have it. How long is it? So for those of you, it is the talent cell rechargeable 12 volt. Um, and actually, is it the 12? So I have the YB1208 300 USB, which is uh, 500 grams, 8,300 milliamps at 12 volts. And it takes about a six hour charge time. Um, and then I also have the, um, it comes with a nice package to let you know. Uh, but as you can see, it will charge phones, computers. Um, this thing is truly a beast. Um, it is 71 bucks. I've seen people who have, um, who have used it. Um, I've seen people who have used it against ones that it costs three, $400. Um, it is the talent sale. I'll actually put it up on the screen for you. So uh, if you can, you can take a screenshot. But once again, if you give me a couple of hours after this, I will happily uh, send you out exactly the one that I have. Um, but as I said, this thing is a beast. It is truly amazing. I use it for outdoor events. And for outdoor events, I do have a tent that I put just in case it rains. Um, and I actually bought plywood to put under my boots to make sure the ground was level. Um, so those are just a couple of things. I dressed the plywood up with uh, some tiles just because it's two by four, two foot by four feet plywood. Um, but I don't have a picture of that one at the moment. Um, I definitely use my... Um, I definitely use my battery even when I have the chance to plug it in just because sometimes I don't feel like stretching um, cords all across the place. All right, a uh, couple last things and we are into um, more of the nitty gritty as far as software. Um, props, you can just buy as many props as you want. Some people use the signs. Uh, me personally, I have two money guns, a bubble gun, um, I went to Joann's and just bought all of the different color. Um, I forgot what those little things are. Uh, the plushy things that go around your neck. Um, you can really use, um, I actually have a prom coming up where I bought three lightsabers because they're having a galaxy prom. Um, I always have stuff for young ladies. Yeah, that's what it is, a boa, thank you. Um, I always have stuff for young ladies, but I'm realizing young men like Nerf guns. They like um, lightsabers. And I don't care how grown or how um, quote unquote for the streets they are or just childish. Um, everybody likes a Nerf gun. 
because if you're a hunter, hey, I got my Nerf gun. If, you know, I'm the toughest person in the world, it's just a real fun feeling sometimes to see people and how much they actually like to be on there. Um, so the big question that most people ask me, how much do I actually end up charging since I change it up for different events? Uh, the short version is, if I was doing four events a month, one day event for four hours, at most of my government or corporate events, it usually runs them for about three hours, somewhere close to $325 to $350 uh, per hour. The reason for this, I put in if I got gas, how far away the event is, how many attendants do they want, um, all of my equipment is included in that base cost. Um, and then monthly expenses are also in there. Um, so basically the event cost me $308. Um, that includes repair on my equipment, uh, wear and tear, uh, replacements, um, how much the actual photo um, software costs. Everything cost me 308 bucks. Um, I charged the client $325 an hour, which meant I charged the client a total of $1,300. I made $991 profit. So that's if I didn't spend that money to replace anything, I would still have $991. If nothing gets broken, what I do personally is I take the $991 and I put it in an account and then I have a separate account for repairs and equipment that I take the remaining $309 for. Make sure you keep yourself a reserve of cash. I know sometimes when you make, you know, $1,500 for one event, your first thought is either I wanna go buy something else or I wanna go spend the money on myself because I earned it. Make sure you put something back because if something breaks, you need to have that reserve money. Um, let's look at a couple of softwares. I'm not going to do full tutorials. I always tell people there are YouTube videos. There are people who do tutorials, including myself. I didn't want this to be a big, hey, come to me for everything because I'm not, I'm not the best person at everything for your situation. Uh, but we're going to look at Luma Booth, Revel Spin, and uh, Touch Picks quickly. And just to show you some of those costs. So a breakdown of the three apps. Um, Touch Picks, $140 a month. Luma Booth, $19.99. Revel Spin is currently free. That does not mean it's gonna stay free. Um, Touch Picks can be used on iOS with DSLRs and GoPros. Luma Booth is iOS only, iPad and iPhone. Uh, Rebel Spin is Android and iOS. Um, all three of them you can add audio to. So uh, if you want to add your own audio files, um, I know some of you were expecting a tutorial on how to upload audio. I did make an entire YouTube video on downloading audio from YouTube, downloading from what we call Pixabay, which is royalty free. Uh, one of those things I do want to warn you about, if you get big enough, you may not want to use regular songs because one is copyright infringement. Um, I use royalty free through and through unless a client actually says I want this song or they have their own music. Um, I never post anything with regular music without it being actually uploaded to the app. So for those of you who use TikTok and stuff like that, you know there are certain songs that you can add straight from the app. The only reason I do that is I never want to get in trouble for copyright. Uh, they will send you a cease and desist letter. Um, I found that out the hard way. Um, I played somebody's song and it got about two or 3,000 shares. And I actually got a contact from someone that said, you're going to stop playing my song without doing X, Y, and Z. Um, I went through the process. Me and that person is great. It wasn't really them. It was their lawyer. But I did the process they told me to do, and they allowed me to continue using that song. Uh, but ever since then, 
royalty free is the way to go for me. Um, I don't like getting in trouble and I don't wanna ever get sued for using someone else's content. Overlays, um, all of them will let you lose, use overlays, but they are at different aspect ratios. Uh, for instance, square on Luma Booth is 720 by 720, while touch picks is like 1440 by 1440. Does that mean you can't buy one overlay and use it for both? Yes, you can. You're just gonna have to resize it using an app and I'll make a tutorial on how to resize overlays um, for all of these. Uh, custom videos, when I talk about custom videos, um, there are no extra features in Luma Booth or Rebel Spin. You spin, it comes back around, you're done. Um, TouchPix allows you to do uh, hyperzoom. It allows you to do um, four um, collages. It allows you to do different uh, effects to the videos. So when I say custom videos, that's what I mean. Um, sharing stations, TouchPix is included. Um, so once you buy the software, you also get the sharing station included. Um, Luma Booth, it is extra, but it's only $7.99 extra. Um, so as I tell people, $7.99 a month plus $20 a month, that's still $28 a month. I'd rather pay $28 a month than $140. Um, and then Rebel Spin is included as well. All right, so let's jump into. And yes, you can do your own overlays. Um, if you're not somebody who likes um, things like Photoshop, because not everybody is a Photoshop person, Canva is free. Um, I would suggest you getting a pro account if you're going to use a lot of their uh, certain features or certain texts, because they are with pro, uh, depending on who you download templates from will also depend on if you need a pro account or not. Uh, some people use pro items. So watch out when buying um, templates because if they use a pro item in the template, you're gonna need a pro account to use it. Uh, so going to touch picks first, I am going, since we're already here, I'm gonna exit out of sharing station they do have demo events. Please understand, you do not have to buy TouchPix to test TouchPix out. Um, you can use a demo, um, create yourself an account. You don't have to buy the subscription and you can do as many demo events as you want. Please understand every video you make will have the word demo. You won't be able to share the videos, but if you really wanna see, hey, is TouchPix the app for me? It is free, you can do a demo and you don't ever have to pay for um, touch picks to actually make events, uh, which also means if you have one month since it's a subscription, if you have events one week and then you don't have your next event for another six weeks, there is a weekly touch picks, which is $50 a week. Um, so they do have some options. You can pay $9.99 for the year, $140 a month, or $50 a week. Um, and you can cancel it at any time and it'll still give you the rest of your week. A uh, couple of settings. Touch pick is weird. It's not just um, what you do in the app. There is a um, computer companion website and that is where you'll actually make the event. Uh, right now, I'm just gonna go over the app. If you want a full tutorial of how to use touch picks website, uh, once again, TouchPix does have their own YouTube page. Um, myself and about 17 other people do TouchPix 101s as well as Canva 101s. Um, and it's really going to be doing that 101. Uh, overall, for the session, I tell people this beep sounds that's here. Uh, one of the most important buttons, because depending on how you um, let it go around, you know that you have five seconds. That beeps allows you to tell someone your session is going to begin in beep, 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 beep. So you can say four, three, two, one with the beeps. Um, as you can see, I got a countdown of four. Uh, the total burst photos is going to be more of um, if you're doing an actual photo booth. One of the things that I love most about touch picks, stabilization. Um, a lot of people ask, why is it that my videos come out shaky and bouncy and stuff like that? 
That is because either stabilization is off or the app you're using doesn't have stabilization at all. Um, one thing that I do like about GoPros, I've used them. GoPros are great with stabilization because they're action camera. They're built to stabilize videos with you riding on bicycles and stuff like that. They give you a lot more stable video, but the iPhone does give you a lot better quality video sometimes, depending on the settings. Uh, some of the other settings that are important about touch picks, if you don't have a printer, I always leave it on none. Uh, most of us don't print if we're 360. Camera settings. The next thing people always ask me is why is it that my pictures are so dark? Uh, number one, I understand someone's going to get very upset with me saying this, so I'm going to open the chat in the side. Um, so, okay, yes. Um, I know people always say, use your front camera. I always ask them, make it make sense to me. Uh, my front camera, 1080p at best, 13 pixels. Um, it's not as good as my back camera. It doesn't have the stabilization as my back camera. So why would I use my front camera, which is lower quality, than my back camera, which is higher quality? Um, now, if you're running a booth where the people have to push the booth, by all means, use your front camera. But if you're the person running the booth and you're starting everything, the best camera to use is the back camera. The reason being, autofocus, continuous focus, which means depending on who gets on there, um, it will always get in focus. One thing that I've seen is that some people do have issues. Once I get this set, because my 360 stays in the same field of view, which just means no matter where it goes, it's gonna be looking at the same place. Sometimes it's better to lock it if you're having issues with the focus going in and out. Uh, the reason being, I can set the focus from the very first time that I test it and it will always stay looking that same way. Um, ultra wide, people ask, how do I get the full body sometimes? If you have a iPhone that has the ultra wide camera, which is anything after I think the X, unless you get like the X Pro, you can get the ultra wide, which now gives you a bigger picture. Same quality, but once again, that's a feature that GoPros don't have because they only have one camera. So it's gonna be a zoom or I have to move my arm. Remember, sometimes we may not have the best space so that ultra wide comes into handy um, for that exposure. Um, sometimes you have an event where it's really, really dark uh, my lights are blasting out, but now that my lights are so bright that everything is entirely too bright. In all of these apps, you can adjust the exposure and it will make it darker or it will make it lighter. Use this depending on the skin tone of the people that you're dealing with. Everybody's skin tone is not the same. Um, if you have a Caucasian client versus African-American clients, you may have to change that exposure. Now, this is where TouchPick kind of differed from everywhere else. Uh, Slow-mo, um, as you can see, you can add audio. Adding audio is just going to be choosing a file. Boom, I added audio to TouchPicks. Now, how did I get the music to my phone? Like I said, there's YouTube videos. And that takes an hour in itself sometimes to explain. But some of the other effects, when we talk about bounce, CRT, just so you can see one of these, I'm going to use the glitch. And the way that you set touch picks is by percentage. Uh, this is weird for some people, but think of it this way. If you have a 10 second video, and you set this to 50%, it's gonna do this effect for five seconds. If your video is 30 seconds, it's still set at 50%, so it's gonna do it for 15 seconds. So it does it for the duration of the video, not just by seconds. This is great because you can technically set the same exact settings for different videos 
and you can still record, you know, five, six, seven, eight seconds, which turns into a 10, 15 to 16 second video. Um, another effect I'm gonna add, just so you can kind of see what I mean by um, a special video is, where is it? Collage, collage three. So now basically what happens, I'm gonna take the audio off just because it's gonna play in my ear. And as you can see, I'm just putting my finger. Sorry if it's making you dizzy or sleepy. Touch pick is gonna take a second. It's gonna crop it, it's gonna adjust it. So for those of you who kept asking what editing software I need to make the video do the boomerang, or do all the effects, that's all done in the software that you choose. You set it beforehand and the software does all that for you. You don't have to go through and edit each and every video. Um, realize the more effects you put on a video, the longer it's gonna take for it to process. Um, the longer it takes for it to process, the slower you can get people on and off. But as you can see, it's gonna be glitchy. And then after a while, it's going to move to Oh, yeah, just a collage. Um, you can change this so that it's normal, but basically when I talk about a more, um, a, a more customized video, that's what those effects are doing. Um, now, one more thing about these effects. Um, someone asked in one of the chats, oh, so GoPro 10 does have an ultra wide. Sorry, I haven't got the GoPro 10, I had the nine. Um, pre and post row videos. Um, a lot of people ask what I do for marketing. Um, I don't market myself. I have yet to put out a Facebook ad. I have yet to put out uh, regular ads or anything else. The way that I market myself is this post row video. So I have a file that is called automatic. Um, basically what happens at the end of every single one of my videos, you're going to see, um, a collage of a bunch of videos It's going to show you, you know, if you want to book, send us an email at snap at take selfies.com, which speaking of which, if you can get an email that says something at your business.com, once again, when you're dealing with corporate clients and business clients, it looks more professional than, my 360 spinner at gmail.com. Um, I know those are things that for some of you, you're like, well, what difference does it make? I'm still sending an email. I'm gonna be honest with you. If, if right now I told you I was selling you a car and it was I sell cars at gmail.com versus Nick at carsalesman.com, you're gonna look at those two emails and go, this seems like a scam. They seem like they're not really in it versus, ooh, carsalesman.com, he has a business page, he has his own business email. Um, but once again, that's if you're doing corporate clients or things like that. Um, but these- Better emails, right? Yes. Um, and you can actually get them on Gmail. Like my Gmail email is uh, snap at takemoselfies.com. It costs me five bucks a month. Uh, but everything now goes through snap at takemoselfies.com. I even did a Google voice number for like an additional three bucks, which is where I got my phone number from to start at. Um, but I ended up getting a, uh, a cell phone line just because when I tried to build my business credit, they wanted an actual phone and they wouldn't accept Google voice numbers. Um, so if you ever wanna apply for certain credit cards and stuff like that, they may not accept Google voice numbers. Um, but pre and post row. Another good thing that I use these for, um, if someone wants to pay me more money, for instance, um, I got you on that. Um, if someone wants to pay me more money, I will put their own special pre-roll or post-roll. For instance, I did, um, I just charged a wedding an extra $250 because they wanted to have a thank you video at the end of every video. So what happens, and what we ended up saying is cool, um, it's gonna be a thank you. And then my um, information 
would just pop up and say, powered by take more selfies. If you want to use us, contact us here. So I made a special video uh, for them and we're going to record it two weeks before their wedding. But basically what's going to happen is you, they're going to step on when they see their video afterwards, the bride and the groom are going to pop up and say, thank you for coming for our special day. We really hope you enjoyed the 360 booth. We really love and appreciate you and we hope you have a great day. Very, very simple. But I added it, I'm gonna add it as a post roll. And so after every video, that's gonna pop up. You can also do pre-roll videos as commercials for the business. Um, but those are just little tidbits on how to upsell and use that pre and post roll. All of the apps have pre and post roll videos that you can add to them. Um, TV sessions, if you have a TV session, you can do one or two things. You can do a slideshow. Um, the slideshow time is just gonna be the time in between the two. Photo carousel is just gonna allow you to go through um, all the different photos. Company logo, whatever logo you put into the um, website companion app is gonna be where you put that company logo. Um, and then you can do thank you screens and custom animations. Overall, this is the best feature that I love on Luma Booth and on um, Touch Picks, and I think RevelSpin has this as well. Um, the motion trigger. Since I have an automatic booth, I just push a button. The motion trigger starts, and it automatically knows to do the 360. With this motion trigger, I never have to worry about starting my video. One of the biggest issues I had when I first started is I would forget to tap the button. I wouldn't tap the button all the way. Something would happen and there's nothing recording. And I got these people, yay, nothing's happening. Um, motion trigger makes sure that something records. Um, and that is one of the biggest things about it is making sure that the video records. Um, to answer the question for the video add-on, yes, it does every single time. Um, it will add it to every single video in that event. Um, whatever your client wants to be added, that can be your post row or your pre row um, And then you can also use post row as a way to advertise yourself. Because once they post the video on uh, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, at the end of the video, guess what everybody around the world sees? Powered by Take Mo Selfies, you know, presented to you by 360 Spinner. So now people are going, well, I want this. They don't even have to ask the person, where did you go to get this? They see it and they get to say, cool, I know where I'm going because that's the video I want. Um, but that motion trigger is important. And that's really these timeouts. I don't do editing. Since I'm the person who runs it, I don't do a thank you. Um, my surveys come a little bit different. Um, and so I really don't mess with these settings. Um, if you have an Orca view, TouchPix does work with Orca view so that it will actually trigger and stop your machine. Um, so that is a really cool thing to add. I will make you a video that shows how to set up pre and post row. Um, web servers, I'm going to be honest with you, um, if you use a web server, um, this is one thing I haven't really messed with. Um, this is where you set up a router. Um, they have to scan it. That's how they get their videos. This is very, very uh, good if you don't have Wi-Fi access. I've never had it, and I've never really used it. I'm an honest person. I'm not going to act like I did. Um, so overall, that's the settings of TouchPix. That's kind of what it does. It can add a couple of extra items. The next thing we're going to look at is RevelSpin. RevelSpin is super easy. Um, everything is done in the app. You give it a name. You give the date of whatever your event is. And so we're going to just do today. You can give it a location. Now, when it says email and text message, what that's basically saying is, what do you want the message to be 
when someone gets an email from you. Thank you for using my business. Uh, below is a link for you to get your video. If you want to book with us, you can reach us at this place. And that way, that is the email it's going to see. SMS is going to be very similar. It's going to be, um, hey, same thing. Click here for your video. Here's a link if you want to use us. Um, I'm not going to fill it out. Um, so this is one of the things you got to pick. Are you going to use square, landscape, or portrait? Um, so some of us see the videos that go across just like full Facebook TV um, size. This is where you can do that here. Um, square and portrait. For touch picks, all of that's done in the, uh, the web application. If you want to use the ultra wide camera, you got to select all of that right here um, on this page. You can access these settings later as well. Um, I always tell people, I get it, you want to save space, but I want the highest quality video. You know, when you post it to Facebook, post it to TikTok, all of those, it automatically downgrades your video. So I try to give them the highest quality video. So by the time it gets to Facebook, I don't look like I got a crappy camera. That's also why some people have crappy cameras. They don't know that the settings are usually at medium and not high on every app. Uh, you can set your record time, countdown time, which camera you use. Like I said, I use the back camera. And this is also where you're going to add your audio file. And once again, it's just as simple. I just added my audio file. Um, overlays. So this is where you're going to add your overlays. And once again, you can go from your camera rolls. And I'm just adding the first picture I see. This, please make sure any overlay you have is a PNG. If it's not a PNG, the white space will stay white and there will be no video. So if you ever get a, um, a session where you realize that even though I put in this picture, it's still white, it's mostly because you don't have a PNG. Uh, one of the things that I do like about touch picks and RevelSpin is you can actually do overlay videos. These are usually simple videos. They have an overlay. They may pop up some confetti. Um, they're nice to have, but I will tell you, um, I will create a whole video on this. It does require you to know about alphas, uh, like alpha backgrounds and stuff like that, which can be created in Canvas, uh, Canva, but you have to have a pro account to be able to create those type of videos. Um, and then once you're done, you've created your 360 um, event. One of the reasons when people ask me, why do I use four different apps? This is one of the reasons. I can do all of this in the app. It took me less than three minutes as where touch picks, it's gonna take me a second because it's just a long process. For those of you who were confused, RevelSpin did give this nice little um, QR code. That is for you to be able to send out the entire event. If you want to start, you just hit the camera and it starts recording. It does your can uh, countdown and everything like that. And that is literally everything for Revel Spin. Like I said, it is a very simple app. Um, all of your videos will pop up here uh, for your full event. You can do QR codes. You can share it the same way I did with um, text message, email, and uh, AirDrop. All right, so closing out of this one, the last one is Luma Booth. Um, I know somebody just direct messaged me. The reason I'm not really showing you as far as the recording quality, I'm gonna be honest with you, all of them record exactly the same. Um, there is no real quality differences. It's just gonna be a feature difference, how you set it up difference. Um, and so I wanted to show you how to set it up. Um, it's, like I said, all of these really have, uh, RevelSpin is free, Luma Booth has a free trial, and TouchPick also has free trials. So you're able to test out and see how your camera looks, because it's gonna look different on your camera and your lighting than it is on mine. Uh, create a new event. Once again, I'm gonna test. 
Um, these screens can be um, specialized. It really doesn't matter if you're um, not actually gonna show them this screen, um, but I usually just change the name and the date, but for today, I'm gonna keep it the same. Now, this was originally made for print type layouts, so you can ignore that, but it does allow you to move this around if you ever wanna use this for print, just letting you know it is here. Capture mode is what you're gonna care about. We don't really use photo, we don't use GIF. You can do a video, but what we care about for 360 is the boomerang. If it's orange, that means you can select those. If they're not orange, then that means that that's gonna be the only one that pops up. Capture settings. Uh, we can skip past photo, GIF, and we're going to boomerang. Very simple. If you want a countdown, you can just slide it to how many seconds you want. Start when moved. Once again, that's the same as the motion trigger. Configure sensitivity is just going to be you testing it out, showing it how fast it needs to move before it starts. So that way, if you just kind of like push it over to talk to somebody, it doesn't think that, oh, it started. Um, and now the next portion, this is where I talked about as far as those aspect ratios. As you can see, rectangle for this is 1280 by 720. Squares are 720 by 720. That's really what you need to make your um, overlays in. The display text, once again, if you're the only person seeing it, get ready and recording is great. Uh, reverse. If you want that boomerang effect where it goes and then it goes backwards, you have to click the reverse button. And as far as recording duration, the longer your record is, so as you can see, seven seconds means that you're gonna have a 14 second video. Here's the only difference about LumaBooth. I can say how fast I want this to go and I can tell it that I want it to be one time speed, then go to 50% speed. And we're gonna make this. And you can add as many of these as you want to change how fast you want that record to go. And when you see the preview, basically what's gonna happen, they have a dancing lady. She is, you're gonna get tired of this lady. For 3.75 seconds is at one speed. Now it has moved to that slow motion. And then it's gonna move back to the fast motion for the last five seconds. So you kind of get an idea in Luma Booth of what your slow motion is gonna look like as far as how you wanna set it. And you can make it as fun and as crazy as you want to. Once again, adding an overlay image is just as quick as clicking. Uh, do I have one? Yes. Overlays added. I have a music folder. Music is added. And once again, as you can see, before recording, after recording. And that's all the settings you really need. Uh, background removal, I have not played with green screens, but I have seen people with the green screen uh, spiral boots. Uh, the effects, make sure to turn off your uh, video effects because it does come with a bunch of them on. I go through and I make sure these are turned off um, so that only the original is the one that's left. Beauty mode is great because everybody likes to look good. Leave it at about a four so people don't look fake. And then we really don't deal with stickers, but if you want to, you can. Um, I have real props. And then once again, we're back to that camera setting so that you can see um, what you're gonna do. Um, this is where you would also set that I wanna use the back, the back camera. And once again, as I said, it has video stabilization. Now, I wanna show you why I like video stabilization. This is with video stabilization off. I'm slightly bouncing my hand, which a lot of y'all can see on my video as well. If I put the standard on, I'm doing that same bounce 
but it's less shaky. If I put it on high, I'm doing the same bounce, but it starts to smooth out my video. And those are the things that you want to know because if you get a bounce, as you can see, I got to do a big bounce with it off. It bounces, it kind of tilts. But this video stabilization is great because all it really cares about is it's moving side to side. Makes everything a lot smoother. Um, so always make sure that's on. Don't use your Zoom button if you're on an iPhone or a GoPro team. If you want to zoom, uh, zoom out, make sure just to use that ultra wide. And if you ever have to zoom in just a little, please don't go over 1.3 or you start to get that grainy effect. So as you can see, there starts to be a lot of noise in your video. Um, I tell people going over 1.3 zoom is gonna cause you a lot of noise. And overall, that's the only other thing is sharing station, um, which like I said, Luma Booth has its own sharing app. It's called Luma Share and it's $7.99 more. But I will say out of all of the application, Luma Booth and Luma Share are the fastest two uh, working together. Um, okay, uh, we went over setting up your business, things that you need, choosing your software, um, questions that people may have that I can answer specifically, um, either about starting your business. Um, it, it may be, hey, uh, three or four minutes of something that you may have done different. If you want to, go ahead and unmute yourself. Um, let me make sure you can. Oh, yeah, you can unmute yourself. What were some of the softwares you were using for the overlays again? Okay, um, for uh, for myself, I use Photoshop and Canva. Um, so let me sh quickly show you Canva app. So Canva is super simple. Um, Canva is that um, plug and play software. Uh, basically what I can do is I can go in and if I need to make a custom overlay, I can just hit 720 by 720 and I'm given a blank screen. Um, the great thing that some people don't always realize is with Canva, I can also upload my own um, items. So when I make like my wedding overlay that I just did, it was just as simple as me bringing it in, dragging to resize. I actually took my bride and groom, which this isn't a picture of them. Um, this is just what I use for the overlay, but I kind of stuck them in the corner. I gave them the Mr. and Mrs. And this is where I actually took um, some of the stuff from here. Um, they have some great fonts, especially if you're looking at wedding fonts. And so it was as easy as me just changing this to Washington. And I ended up with a really simple but nice overlay for a wedding. Um, and I actually sold this template to a bunch of people. Um, but sometimes it can be that easy. The other thing is in the elements tab, I can type in the word wedding and a lot of things pop up. So instead of using my download it, um, I can come in and just use some of the stuff from Canva and still create a nice looking design. The great thing is you can change the color. Um, this color picker, if you ever get something, uh, this color picker is a lifesaver because I can go pick the same colors and I can match wedding colors. Um, so that's something that if you, if you use Canva and you're using elements, certain elements can actually be, um, 
can actually be changed. For instance, these uh, infinity rings, if you notice, it doesn't allow you to change the color, but there is a little filter that says, hey, I want static only. Um, and you can choose specific colors or um, if you want cutouts that have transparent backgrounds, but I go through and I try to find, as you can see, ones that have colors and I can now go in and say, cool, her dress is this, uh, it's just white, but let's just use the green for this. So if I want to change it to the green and white, I can, um, or I can do green and gold. I like this because I'm able to match a lot of my elements to the colors. So I just asked the bride and groom, hey, can you send me uh, a picture of your colors for the wedding? So that way I can upload a random video. So for instance, if this is what they sent me and said, this is the red that they use, I can go over here and I can now change this to be that very specific red. Um, and I can do that for a lot of things. If you're doing a baby shower, once again, instead of weddings, you may type in baby showers or baby, um, and they have a lot of graphics. Um, the other thing is, if you're gonna create your own overlays, um, I would advise you to go to websites like PNG Tree, and I will have a list of these coming out um, very, very soon. Um, I promise you, give me about an hour or two after the uh, meeting just to reset. But uh, PNG Tree, um, uh, Free PNG, there are a lot of websites that are just strictly uh, PNG, which just means there's a transparent background and you can type in um, anything that you're looking for. So if I went to PNG Tree, use it all the time. Once again, I can type in wedding and I can actually type in wedding border. And so now I have all of these wedding borders to kind of choose from and to be able to download as a PNG. Um, and it does give you a lot of, hey, you looked at this, here are some other ones, um, but PNG tree, PNG, um, PNG websites, and you can actually look up, uh, You can actually just look up um, different PNGs. Um, yes, I do have a pro version of Canva. Uh, yes, for Canva, you can choose the 760, but one of the reasons that I don't, um, it just depends on which, um, what am I thinking of? It depends on what software you're using and what size overlay you need. So that is the reason why I don't always just type in um, and for those that we were talking about, like the alpha overlays and stuff, all of that can be done with the pro account. Um, if you see a crown icon on Canva, that means that is a pro, um, a pro item. So that's one of the reasons I think for me, I just paid for the 149 for Canva and it also allowed me to, um, hire out some people to be able to use my Canva to create stuff for me. Now, not all of them. Please understand, like I said, um, you do not need a pro account to access everything that I showed you. Um, so going back to the, when I did these uploads, these uploads, no matter if you have a free account with Canva or, um, or you have a pro account, you can upload whatever you want. In the elements tab, one of my favorite buttons is show me free. Uh, whenever I make overlays, a lot of times I do the show me free. So that way I can only see what is allowed on a free account. When I had a free account, that was all that I used is free. Uh, but as you can see, even that little um, border that I used earlier that I changed the color, I can do that even on this free account. Um, and that's just because I use the free. Um, but yes, it is 149 a year. 
everything's not going to be free and it's going to be worth it. Um, I really, I really love building stuff for other people, but sometimes when you need it, it's better to have that account just in case. Any other questions, comments, concerns, moans, groans? Oh, corporate events. Uh, corporate clients were kind of weird for me. Um, I live in, I'm currently housed in Jefferson City, Missouri. Um, most of the events we have here are corporate. Um, one of the big ways that you can get corporate clients is a lot of the same on how you get wedding clients. Um, I went to venues and I said, hey, do you have any events coming up? And they said, well, we have um, something small. And I just asked the lady, hey, would you be willing to ask your client if I can come out and I'll do her event for free um, as long as I can just bring business cards? She said, fine. I went out um, and I, I just happened to be there. And of course, um, someone who worked at High V was there. Um, they said, hey, this is great. I want to, I have a Christmas party coming up and I want to do this for my Christmas party. It was at the same venue. So she already knew where we were going to be, how we were going to be set up. Um, and so the first thing they asked me was, do you have an LLC set up? Do you have an EIN? Do you have insurance? Can you fill out this, um, 1099 paperwork with all of that information. Can you send it? Um, luckily, I had everything because I was already um, building another part of my business. But if you're looking for corporate clients, LLC, EIN, um, what was the last one that she just asked me? Oh, insurance. Those are the big three with corporate clients. Um, that is because. Whenever they get vendors, understand their event is covered under their insurance. They usually have requirements for their vendors to be able to be vendors. Um, the next thing is um, starting with some of my corporate clients, I also contacted schools. Um, so while I don't do marketing, um, I will call the living life out of people. Um, I called the schools in my area. I said, hey, my name is Nick. I, um, I own Take Mo Selfies, and I was able to show them um, some videos from my first event and say, this is what our videos look like. Um, if you have dances, proms, uh, cotillions, anything like that, please give us a call. I do school discounts. I treat schools like non-for-profits. Um, so I usually only charge them somewhere between $125 to $150 profit for me. So realize that doesn't mean that I'm charging them $125 to $150 an hour. That's how much I profit. Um, but the great thing about schools is they give me four or five events a year per school. Um, and they have so many kids that want to do sweet 16s, uh, parents that want to do different things. And then they um, even invite you to national conferences, especially if you can get in with a district. Uh, once again, you're opening yourself to a lot of business. Um, the other thing is when it gets to around holiday seasons, contact places that you've heard do uh, Christmas parties, um, especially if you have an area high V, uh, something that's like, um, what is it called? Employee owned, those type of places, give them a call. Hey, can I uh, speak to the person who's over your events or who's over your human resources? Hey, I would like to be a vendor with your business. This is what we do. Um, and basically um, come up with a script. And if you need help with a script, that's something else I'm, I can create. Um, I'll just, once this is over with in the chat, um, I'm gonna ask a couple of questions and I have a little survey. But basically if that's something you would need to say, how do I approach somebody? Um, I'm personable. So I'm quick to walk up. Hey, how you doing, Joe? My name is Nick. Heard you was over HR at uh, hy V. Y'all got any events coming up? Oh, well, I could take this, 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 and this off your hands because I do photography, this, this. And those kind of conversations bring you to getting those corporate clients. Um, don't be scared to start out with smaller corporate events because especially if they're a national conglomerate, um, I don't know if anybody's ever heard of Champs Chicken, Blue Taco, um, anything like that, but 
I just did, I did their Christmas party for the people who do the marketing for Champs Chicken, Blue Taco, and a bunch of other food places. And that event only got me about a thousand dollars. I'm now doing their national summit and they are paying for me to go to the summit. They're paying for me to have food. They actually gave me tickets to the summit, free drinks, um, my hotel, gas. And on top of all of that, it still cost them about $1,500 to have me at their event. Um, So me, and I'm actually taking uh, my significant other, we kind of get a free trip because we're only there for three hours to do the actual event. So one hour of setup, one hour breakdown, three hours of event, 1500 bucks, but I also get hotel, travel, food, and everything else covered. Um, please don't be afraid to ask for that. Um, I know someone in the chat was talking about, they don't know if they could go to uh, Mexico. Someone asked them to come to Mexico. I'm gonna be honest with you. The worst thing that could happen is that you look at the cost of what it would cost for you to go to Mexico and you tell the person, this is what it would cost for you to uh, get me to bring my 360 to you in Mexico. The worst thing they can tell you is no. And I'm gonna be honest with you. If you say I can't do it because I don't know how much it would cost, what difference is that than you putting in the work to say it's gonna cost you $1,700 to get me out there and then possibly saying yes. The biggest thing about any business is don't be afraid of no's. You're gonna get a lot of no's. You're too expensive. I can't afford it. Hey, I'm so sorry that you can't afford us. Uh, What was your budget? Oh, well, you know, my budget was only at $900. Well, sometimes I do sit there and I go, cool, I charged you $1,300 or $1,200, which I actually did for an event. I charged, I said they were, they were, um, it would cost them $1,200 for the event. They told us that their budget for this was only $900. Um, I thought about it. It was a three-hour event but it was one of the largest nonprofits in Jefferson City. Well, what I decided to tell them is, cool, I will give you a 25% in-kind match, basically saying a discount, but in-kind match just sounds a lot better for nonprofits and I get a tax write-off. I will give you an in-kind match of $300 and that way you only pay the $900 and can you put me in your program as an in-kind sponsor. Now I got free advertisement because even though I gave them a $300 discount, they just gave this booklet to 300, 400 people for this event and they got to see me in action. So I just paid basically $300 for advertising. Um, Sometimes you do have to play that game. I don't go below, like, I know what prices I will not go to. Um, As my friend Aaron says, I don't wake up for less than $700. I don't wake up for less than $900. Get that in your head sometimes. Please understand, there are people out there that charge $2,500 for three hours of a 360 booth. You can charge that. Um, I I see you. I, I see your face, Darian. (laughs) <laughs> but I mean, realistically, look at your market. Um, I don't try to undercut people. I say, this is what I want to charge. And that's what I want to charge. But I do know there's a lady in St. Louis right now who charges about $2,500 for three hours. She makes about $800 um, an hour. There are people who pay her for that $2,500 for those three hours. Uh, but understand she has the lights. She has marquee letters that are four feet high. She has so much to offer that they see the value in her $2,500 for three hours. Um, Sometimes you have to explain to people what the value is. For instance, um, everybody here always looking for uh, videos and stuff for 360s. If I told a company right now that I can make your event look a hundred times more appealing to young people, if you hire me as a 360, they start asking me, well, how is that? I said, well, 
I have something they want to post. This event could be the most boring thing in the world. But if you hire me, they want to post, look at the 360 booth I got on at this boring conference. Well, now they're putting out there, hey, y'all should come to this event. They had some great stuff. And now they're talking about, well, what was the event? Oh, the event was learning how to do real estate for X, Y, and Z. Well, people are like, I want to do real estate. So it's a conversation start. It's marketing. Hey, y'all missed out last year. Look at what we did. Even though the conference was, we just sat here and we talked for four hours. Um, it's about your pitch. And like I said, if you, if you feel like you really can charge $300 an hour, you can do it. Um, I don't get mad at anybody. Um, I charge $30 an hour for one-on-one -on -one sessions. Some people charge $100 an hour for one-on-one -on -one sessions. Does that mean that they're better than me? In the eyes of most people, they better be better than me because if I'm going to pay him $30 and I pay you $100, I, expect, I have an expectation in my head of $100. Does that make sense? And I think for everybody, it, it's the way you present yourself, which is going back to why I said, what's your target audience? What's your brand? The way you present yourself is going to be part of why people would pay for you. Um, and I just, I just tell people, you know, occasionally buy more things, buy things that you add in for free, buy things that you upcharge, uh, don't put all your eggs out there at once because I'm one of those people that I like to be able to upcharge you to make you think you got a deal. Well, hey, $1,200 may not be in your budget, but what if I throw in the TV that's usually $250? Now, how much did it cost me to throw in the TV? Took me an extra five minutes to set up, but I've now made that $300 difference up for their quote unquote expectation. Hey, I'll throw in the free video, but since you're a corporate company, I'm gonna need your company to uh, make the video. Here's the aspect ratio I needed it. And that is a big thing. When you're working with corporate clients, sometimes you don't have to do marketing. You don't have to create overlays. Um, for that $1,500, um, yeah, the $1,500 going out, their marketing company is actually making all of the overlays to my specifications. And they only send it to me and just say, hey, here's the final product. This is what we want. And I'm doing less work, but I'm making more money. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Okay, um, should I stick with the GoPro or go with the iPhone 13? Do you, <laughs> um, let me put it to you this way. Have you looked at the specifications of your GoPro compared to the iPhone 13? Um, it's not that I don't want to give you my answer because I'm, of course, kind of biased. I love my iPhone because it's one less thing for me to have to set up. It also allows me to use more apps uh, because some of these apps aren't GoPro friendly. Um, and that's one more thing that could possibly fail. So that's what I will say about having a GoPro. Um, iPhone 13, and I also heard that um, some of these newer GoPros, because of the processing power and stuff, the batteries last a little less. So if you're doing longer events, if you're getting that GoPro or keeping that GoPro, you have to buy batteries versus my iPhone 13, I can just pull out one of my power banks and keep it charged. Um, the other thing is, what is your sharing station if you use one? Um, iPhone to iPad is really, really simple. Um, so that's one of the things that you really have to look at. Um, as far as buying the iPhone 13 specifically, I tell people that the camera and the iPhone is almost the same, no matter which one you get, because most of the applications don't allow for you to use the macro camera, uh, the camera. Um, if you get a regular iPhone and you get more storage, um, that's better than getting the iPro, iPhone Pro Max. Um, 
the Max versus the regular iPhone is not going to do anything for you as far as software wise. Um, it's just, it's really going to work the same because the only two cameras you really worry about are the wide and the ultra wide, which come on the regular iPhone. Uh, so unless you're paying for more storage, because realize it does download the videos to your phone, there's not much of a reason to get an iPhone 13 Pro Max just for the 360 um, for a macro camera. Um, also, uh, for some people, I will say the iPhone, anything iPhone 11 on up is pretty much what you need for a 360. Um, the iPhone 11 runs all the softwares. Um, it's a lot cheaper right now. And it also has the ultra wide and the wide camera. There's no point in you spending an extra six, seven, eight hundred dollars for um, another iPhone. Um, so I always tell people, watch out for that uh, because there's no point in getting it. Um, now, as far as the iPad, that one's hard. Um, so depending on your software, I will say the iPad, I think, sixth fifth generation as a regular ipad is the lowest you should go uh the ipad air 2 is the lowest you should go as far as airs and then you can pretty much get all of the pro models um and they will work um once again i know i keep saying it depends on the software um touch picks requires you to have a higher iOS. And that's one thing I can actually show some of you. Uh, so when looking at softwares, one of the things that I type in is touch picks iOS requirement. As you can see right here, it says requires iOS 13.2 or later. For a Mac, it requires Mac OS 11 or later, and then you can use it on pretty much any um, PC. Now, what I the reason that I know which iPads you can use is because iOS 13.2. So then I would go, which iPads support iOS? 13.2. And so they will let you know I, iPad OS 13.2 is available for the 12.9 inch iPad Pro or later, 11 inch iPad Pro or later, 10.5 inch iPad Pro or later, uh, the iPad 7th, 6th, 5th. Um, so like I said, fifth generation iPad, uh, iPad mini fifth generation, iPad mini four, iPad Air, uh, third generation iPad Air two. Um, so this is really how I figure out which iPad iPhone um, I need is because I've looked at what is it that this, what is it that this software that I'm about to use needs, which iPhone actually works for. Um, so sometimes you do have to do your own research because like I said, there are so many different softwares and they're coming out with more and more. Um, you really do have to look at which iOS it needs and you can just type that in. Any other questions, comments, concerns? I know I said eight o'clock and I know a lot of people are gonna get off, um, but I am going to, um, I'm going to stay on for a little while longer. I'll keep the recording going um, if anybody jumps off. Um, but I know there are a couple of questions. Do you have a questionnaire for clients to fill out when booking, such as type of event, amount of people, et cetera? They don't fill it out. Um, I do a um, calendar. Uh, so basically, I send them an invite to get on Zoom with me, um, and we talk about it. And so I'm actually using that calculator that I kind of showed you um, to where I'm telling people, hey, um, 
how many people are you having at your event? Where is your event? And I'm actually researching things. By the time we get off the phone, I can tell them straight up that it's going to cost you $1,000 for your event. And a lot of them are like, okay, well, send me the estimate. They accept the estimate. Um, and that's something I didn't actually talk about. Um, the way I send estimates, because I don't have a very specific per hour, um, is through Square. Square is amazing um, to accept payments um, and to set up your 360 event. Uh, this is one thing that I do pride myself on. Um, so inside of my invoices, just so you know, I was very, very serious. I have $2,100 $2, in pending approvals for this month, uh, $1,500 in paid approvals, and I still have people with $2,000 worth of um, outstanding. When you ask, do I charge a um, deposit? Yes, I do. That's why you see the partially paid. Um, but the reason that I do like Square is I can go into invoices and I have different things set up. So I can create an invoice. And like you can see, I got a Sweet 16. Like I said, it's for a friend. So it was a little cheaper. Um, but 900, 450, 750, it just depends on the events. Um, and some of them have. Uh, asked me to do things, but the great thing is this keeps track of everybody that I've ever used. And I can also make new clients. So the way I make them is Anderson. It'll ask me for some info. I'm just gonna use me. And the great thing is that's all that's needed to make their profile. Um, for me, I always just say whatever the event. So this is a test event and I always change my message. I can put in what's the date of service. It's tomorrow. Um, it's one time and the due. I personally set my due for the day before the event. So it would be due today. I have mine set up that all of mine's are variable. So I know that I have a 360 booth for three hours coming up and it's gonna cost them 750 bucks. When it comes to sales tax, I'm gonna answer this plain and simple. Talk to an accountant, look at the laws of your city, your state. Um, Square is free, it's completely free. Um, the only thing you have to worry about is when taking cash payments, they do do like the 3.5% for uh, transaction fees, but I'm going to be honest with you, no matter who you use, you're going to get a 3.5% uh, transaction fee um, to use a credit card. Now, if you're cash shopping, that's totally different. But once again, when I'm dealing with corporate clients, they need invoices. Um, I don't have to do sales tax. So I don't do sales tax. You may have to do sales tax. Um, I don't know every principality. I don't know every group. So make sure you check. Um, great thing is, if I wanted to add a payment schedule, all I got to do is click request initial deposit. My initial deposit is always 50%. That is just me. Some people do $100, $200. Some people do 25%. I am a 50% to put you on the list. Um, I also tell people that 30, up until 30 days before your event, your deposit is refundable. If it's within 30 days of your event, it is non-refundable. Um, the only other thing is I also have in my contract that I can give you your deposit back with no issues, no, no lawsuits by any means or acts of God. So for instance, if it floods in Jefferson City and I'm not able to make the event, that is an act of God. I am not going to come to this event. If it's a 17 inch blizzard, if it's a seven inch blizzard, if it's a blizzard, if it's snowing and I don't feel safe, I can say due to the snow, I am unable to come. 
I always make sure that I know in advance that, hey, it's going to snow. I tell the client in advance, hey, depending on the snow, you do know we, you know, are you pushing back your event? And I let them know if you're going to move your event, your refund can go with you. But if you cancel your event for anything other than an act of God, you may say, hey, I'm canceling the event because it was just not a lot of people who wanted to be there. I apologize, but it's within your 30 days, so you can't get your refund back. But if you say, hey, it's a seven inch blizzard, we got to push it back two weeks, by all means, I understand. Um, your deposit is due the day that you accept the invoice. And then I go in and I will set that the remaining balance is due one day before the event. I will not set up at all if you have not, um, I have not set up at all if you have not paid. Um, now, if you are a corporate client, we may be able to talk. If you are a school, we may be able to talk because I do understand you have to do requisitions and stuff like that. Most of the time, corporate events are playing with credit cards. And I will say, while I don't always do a tip jar, they are really good at tipping me afterwards. I personally give my tips to whoever my attendants are. Um, for the question of how much do I pay attendants, um, 15 to $25. $15 if your only job was to show up to the event and run my booth, $25 an hour if I make you pack up everything, take it to the event, set it up, run the booth, break it down, and come back. So usually I know that if they're doing everything, I add two hours before the event, two hours after the event. And so that's what I'm paying. And I also put that in the price for my um, client. I always charge for the extra attendant um, because that is what most of them have is two attendants. Um, but outside of this, once you put what the date is and save, the great thing about this is they can add a card like I said, oh, it's 2.9 with a 30%, uh, 30 cent transaction. Um, I do have gift cards, but um, I allow them to tip. I allow them to store, which is great because when they store, I know that they're usually going to book more with me. Um, manual or email? Email is going to send it directly to them. Um, I don't like the email just because I like giving them the link. Um, so what that ends up looking like if I copy this, this is the invoice that my client receives. So they see, hey, this is where you put in all your info. You're going to need this 375 for your test event, invoice number 10 on April 15th, bill to date of service. And they can actually download a PDF version of this. And this is a legitimate invoice. Um, this QR code does work. Um, if you put your phone up to it, it will allow you to pay for this invoice. If you want to give me $375, cool, thank you. Um, but Square is amazing to be able to send invoices um, because as you can see, once you set up your items, you don't have to worry about anything else. It's in there every single time. Um, that was one of the best things I think I've ever done. Um, just because I can also send estimates. Yes, ma'am, did you have a question? Ms. Rodisha, if you were trying to talk, I can't hear you. Um, Are you talking about, um, if you could take yourself off mute for a second, Darian, are you talking about the Excel that I use to um, figure out how much for them to pay me? Or are you talking about as far as me sending the invoice? And while you're getting off of mute, um, for Spinoramic 360, um, so that first, that first payment was just a deposit. It will send them a reminder. Um, so I have reminders set that 
um, one week before your event, hey, just a reminder that, you know, your payment's going to be due in seven days. And then it's going to send them another link that says, hey, you can pay the rest of it here. Um, and it also does give them the choice of saying pay in full or pay the deposit. Um, for the presentation, I will say that I am going to upload it to YouTube and I'm going to put the link in the group just because it is uh, two hours and some odd minutes. Um, it won't fit as a just an email, so I am going to upload it. Um, how many boots do I have? So I have one 360 booth. Um, I am ordering a second one to be shipped to Denver because my sister uh, wants to run one for me and we're gonna split the profits. Um, I then do um, standalone boots, so the wall boots. Um, and I have six backdrops with two setups. So I think in total, I have three right now and I'm working on a fourth uh, booth, but everything for this is for the one 360 booth because my 360 and my standalone boots there are two different entities within the company. Can you hear so, me? Yes. Oh. Now, the Excel, the, what you just went through as far as the invoice, create the invoice and everything, is that is that something that you built yourself or is that in Square? That's all in Square. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then for those of you who run uh, Etsy stores, because um, I know some of you sell um, overlays and stuff like that, Etsy does connect to Square. Um, and so if you're ever in person, you can actually sell stuff through Square and they'll still process in Etsy. Um, it's a great little feature, especially if you're talking to someone and instead of saying, well, go to my Etsy store, you can actually say, hey, well, if you want it, here you go. Um, the size of my booth is 100 centimeters. It's the one that fits between four to six people. Um, I can not only give you a link, I actually sell that booth now um, myself. So Miss Denise, if you want to, um, I'd be happy to talk with you a little later. Um, I will say that I only sell automatic boots. Um, I don't sell manual boots. Uh, love you all. Like I said, I'm a little biased, um, but it's either one of them is great. I just know that um, me personally, that's what I uh, deal with most. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Anybody want to make any any of their comments? All right, Mrs. Spinner, uh, Spinneramic, I got a question. Why you look so mad? <laughs> like every time I look down at you, it, he you you were staring like, hey, if he he say the wrong thing, I'm gonna punch him through the computer. All right. It's just you you one of the few people that's on here. Like I I've been watching WWE in the background. Um I see Mr. Darian because I only got four people, but I just had to laugh at that because I was like, he is the one person that has just been. Yes. Um who transporting 115 uh, so, so. Everybody's got the camera. I'm sorry, could you say that again? Miss Leela. I agree. They said you see that money that can be made with 360. <laughs> um, Miss Leela, if you, I, I know I just heard you say something, but if you could. I think you're having mic issues. If you could put your question in the chat, I can still answer it. Um, to transport that 150 centimeter, I mean, 115 centimeter. One, um, ask for help. I know this sounds crazy. I, um, I've transported 115 centimeters in my van. Um, it fits, but that sucker heavy. Um, I can actually pick up my 100 by myself. Um, it's still kind of heavy, but uh, I lift it, I slide it. Um, two of the things that I have bought, um, I bought tarps and I have moving blankets. Um, before I up uh, unload and unload it from my truck, uh, I mean, from my van, I actually put the moving blanket down 
that way it slides up. So what I literally do is I push it up against the van and I slide it up onto the moving blankets. Um, and then I put all of my boxes. Um, I am a very, very organized person when it comes to my 360. Um, I have a bag um, that has all my stanchions, a box that has all of the equipment. Um, so it all stacks on top of each other. And then I just slide it out. Um, and then I put the moving blanket back up. And so the same thing, I actually have the travel case. Um, I bought it because I planned to travel with it, which is why when that person said um, somebody had a trip in Mexico, uh, I'm very, very honest. If y'all need somebody to go to Mexico, call me. I will let you know how much it costs for me to go to Mexico. Um, but I have the travel case. It's the hard one. Um, it protects very well. Um, I don't mind it getting beat up. Um, the soft cases are great for um, for manual boots because they're lighter. You can put them in the back seat. Um, if you are traveling, I, I get that it's um, I get it's more weight, um, but I would definitely take my flight case. That's why it's I'm not being funny. That's why it's named a flight case to fly. Um, I paid. I took it on one trip with me. It was $175 to take it um, where I needed to go. Um, that's what it was for, I think, uh, Southwest as a overweight. Um, I will say that's one of the things. Learn your different uh, airlines and stuff like that and figure out what's the cheapest way to get it. Is it better to just send it by itself and have it meet you there? Or is it better to fly with it? Because I also tell people, remember, if you fly with it, you got to get it from the airport to your hotel, from your hotel to the venue. Um, so unless, unless you're renting an actual cargo van or something like that from Enterprise, once you get there, uh, that may be difficult. Um, so realize it's not just transporting it, whatever the airport cost is. You got to get it to the airport and then you got to get it to your venue um but i think last time it in total it may have cost me about 300 dollars to just get it there um plus myself and i ended up charging like 2500 dollars for the event um but they actually included my hotel for um even though i say charge 2500 they paid for my hotel with their credit card and i still charged them about 1200 dollars um, sometimes I will almost do the event for cost because if you tell me, and I'm, I know I'm making this joke about Mexico, realistically speaking, if somebody tells you, you can go to Mexico for three days because they want a 360, I not only get exposure from this event, I get to go to Mexico. Um, I may charge you less for the actual event because you're paying for travel. Um, the video, like I said, it's going to take a second to upload. Um, but once I get it uploaded, I will send out a link. Uh, you can download Square. Uh, you don't have to have a business account. Square, um, I will say this. One thing I did miss, business bank account. If you got a business, you got an EIN, open yourself up a business bank account. Um, separate your money. And then I link my Square to my business bank account. Everything goes straight to it. Um, but no, you do not need a business account. It is a regular square account um, because it's just made for small business and big business as a POS system. Um, but no, I would get, get yourself a business account, business checking. And um, I know y'all gonna get scared about this. Get yourself a business credit card. Um, I went through Capital One, got a $1,000 uh, limit on my Capital One credit card. Uh, three months into my business, they upgraded it to $3,000. Um, six months into my business, they upgraded it to $6,000. Um, and now that we're about to be in May, I have the ability to ask them for an increase um, because I make purchases on that credit card. Um, I get cash back on that credit card. I know it doesn't seem like a lot, but if you spend $2,000 a month 
And even if you only get 1% cash back, that's $20. That's Luma Booth. Uh, so you just got your software for free. Um, but not only that, you're building business credit. So let's say you go from someday soon, let's say 360 businesses just kind of die out. Um, I don't expect them to anytime soon, but think about if you have a business entity that now has a $25,000 credit card limit and a great payment history. If you want to take this business and do something new with it and expand it, you have the ability to, because you now have credit. Um, it's the same thing you do in your personal life. You build that credit for what you may do in the future. Um, so I will say business account and get you a business credit card, just spend it wisely. Um, but yeah, I think if there's no other questions, that's uh, all I have. I will say if you ever wanna do a one-on-one -on -one session um, in the link and in the uh, what I send out, there will be a, um, a link for you to be able to do one-on-one -on -one sessions. Uh, always chat with me inside of the group. I'm always willing to help everybody. Um, and send me success stories, you know, send me pictures of your events because I like to see people succeed. Um, but I thank everybody for coming out and uh, I'll be on here for another 10 minutes, just answering questions if you got them. Uh, for everybody else, hope you have a great night. I'm glad y'all spent two and a half hours with me. Um, everybody is well, more than welcome. Um, I enjoyed this session. Um, yes, uh, the group will stay open. Um, I may have to extend the, um, the actual event a little further out, but I'll keep it open so that everybody was able to talk. Um, thank you again. Um, any questions? I won't need your email addresses. What I will actually do uh, to get emails is I have a uh, MailChimp. I'm going to put the link inside of the group. That way everybody can fill it out and I can just send one email blast instead of trying to go copy and paste everybody's email. Um, but that way I can just send out everybody, hey, um, here's all the information from probably tomorrow because we're getting later yesterday's group. And then I can also send out, hey, I'm having another talk. We're doing a little more advanced or we focusing on the new software. Uh, so I can invite you all out to that because I think a lot of you are from like three or four different groups. Uh, I do use backgrounds. Um, so I did a, the Hollywood theme had a VIP background and I actually have a 10 by eight. Um, VIP step and repeat. So it just does VIP, 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 VIP. Um, yes, Gret, uh, you will be able to see the video. I'll uh, send the link. Um, but yeah, I do backgrounds. Um, we actually do balloon arches and all types of stuff. Um, you printing is, I think is where I got this one from. Right. Uh, yes, so I got mines from you printing and it cost me That's the shipping order confirmation. Um, that one ended up costing me about $190. Um, but what I did do is since it was a custom background at the time, I actually ended up charging my client most of that price and they got the custom um, backdrop. And then of course they were like, well, you can keep it because that we didn't pay for it. We just needed the custom backdrop. Um, and so that was that was pretty much it. Uh, QSNs, um, DSLRs are great. I know that TouchPix just put out a new video on using a DSLR, and I'm going to try to hook up my DSLR. Um, I haven't tried it yet, only because 
once again, that was one extra thing that I had to bring, set up, uh, make sure it was charged. And I'm not going to lie to you, my DSLR camera battery on the last maybe two or three hours uh, on video. And so by the time I bought enough batteries, changed it out, um, it wasn't worth it, but I am going to do it to do um, just videos to show people how it works. Uh, no, I'm not opposed to using HoneyBook. I've seen people use it. The only reason I use Square is because I have a Square reader. Um, it's on my phone already from one of my other businesses. Um, it connect to my Etsy so I can make, you know, um, Etsy purchases. I sell my t-shirts at events and people for some reason like to buy them. Um, so I was able to do all of that. Um, which type of backdrop do you use? Nine times out of 10, I use the venue. Uh, whatever is um, the party or anything like that, that is the only thing I usually use at backdrops unless people want a custom or a backdrop that I already have. And most people either want custom and if you want super custom, like with your picture on it, because uh, some people like those, it costs you more, you get to keep it. And I actually give them the, um, I have like extra little uh, stands and everything. So I give them the stand so they can put it up, post it on their wall. Um, but most of the time I'm just using the um, backdrop. Uh, Tasha says, if you need a custom backdrop, you can also contact something to talk about on IG, Facebook, or Google. So I'll make sure I put that in there. I always like a shout out. Uh, could you share a video for one of your events? I want to see the, or uh, the organization. Yes, give me a moment to go grab one. And I'll share it. Our booth is coming this week, so I have a crash course using my Canon, but yes, this Square Reader is free. So people don't pay up front, swipe their card in the parking lot. I like you. <laughs> um, I got my backdrops from, well, any printed backdrops I got from you printing, but um, it's something to talk about. Are they African-American? Because I like giving my money to people that look like me. I'm so sorry if you're not, I'm just being honest. Um, hey. People get mad, but I do. Um, have you heard about Selfie 360 software? It's a lifetime payment. No, but definitely gonna check it out because anything I ain't gotta pay for more than once, I like it too. Matter of fact, one of the things I need to do is save the chat. So that way I can go through it. Uh, and thank you, because I'll definitely be looking at them. Um, okay, so, yeah, one of our videos, what is your YouTube channel? Uh, Take Mo Selfies, uh, T-A-K-E-M-O Selfies. It's only two videos right now, but I'll be uploading more tutorials because um, I only started uploading tutorials because I got tired of ask, answering the same question uh, over and over again. Um, but you'll have more tutorials coming up soon. And I'll also send the link with this video. Um, here you go. So there won't be sound just because I don't remember if this is, I think this is a copyright free song. Yeah, it is. Um, there won't be sound just because I don't want to hear it in my ear the whole time. Um, so for this event, um, as you can see, I had the four with the lights. Um, this was at their welcome stage. They had these random plants that they wanted us to put in. Um, as you can see, very simple overlay. It's just the Veritas. This is my end video that I was talking about. This is self-advertisement. Um, but overall, it is that same type of setup. Um, I just do the back and forward. Um, I do coach people occasionally. 
you know, hey, you can face each other, you can do stuff. Um, overall, I will say um, I enjoyed it. I had a young lady, as you can see, this young lady was on there a lot. Uh, we actually made a video just for her because she got on 14 times in one night. Um, but overall, it is just um, a very simple um, way of doing it. Um, oh, sorry. Got you. Um, but yeah. Uh, very simple, um, especially with that kind of event. It was a church event, uh, but overall, it was just an overlay added, added music, and they jumped on and it did the basic round and round. All right, I think that's all the questions. Um, most likely, not gonna lie, I am tired. I know I said um, an hour, hour and a half, I promise to get y'all this this information by in the morning. Um, I just don't want to be up all all night. Um, I thank you all for coming out. Thank y'all for sitting with me, um, my dude. Um, hope y'all enjoy the rest of y'all night. So I am going to end this at eight thirty, and you all are very very welcome. So.